The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. Today's lesson includes seven characters, all of which are related to the snake and how it moves by contraction and extension. The first oracle bone pictogram is a primitive drawing of a foot stepping on a snake. The foot was eventually dropped and a more realistic snake with very clear markings appeared. This later became highly stylized with a pointed head, long tail, and a single mark along the back, and was finally reduced further to only three brush strokes. This character is pronounced third tone, yeah, yeah. A snake moves, stops, and extends its body again, and this supposedly led to its use in classical Chinese as a sentence marker, somewhat like a full stop or period in English. Depending on context, this abrupt stop in a text could be interpreted as a mark of conviction, exclamation, surprise, and possibly even a question. However, in modern Mandarin, it's mostly used to mean and, also, besides, and similar ideas. In other words, our snake stops and then extends further. This notion is important in all of today's characters. For example, a modern Chinese question and answer could be, Is your wife there? She's here too. Tai tai. Zai bu zai. Ye zai. Remember that pronouns are often understood in conversation. Today's second character is another version of the same snake. This one, indicating extension from first person me, second person you, to third person, pronounced first tone. Ta. Ta. Notice how the strokes of this new character, ta, relate closely to our original snake, yeah. Now we have another character, also pronounced first tone, ta, ta. It's a combination of the person radical and our pictogram for snake. It's not some evil snake person. It's an extension from me to you to him or her. It's also a phonosemantic compound, with first one version and then another for the snake phonetic element. Now for a quick history lesson. With the disintegration of China's last dynasty in 1911, and the resultant May 4th movement in 1919, there was cultural and political upheaval in China for many years. In the minds of many Chinese, China's weakness on the world stage was attributed to her ancient Confucian traditions, so intellectuals at the time wanted to dispose of the old ways and adopt Western science, democracy, and modernize the language, and possibly even alphabetize it, which failed, of course, because of too many homonyms. One result was that scholars moved to replace the classical written language with the modern spoken language, the everyday colloquial speech already being used in novels. Scholars also felt a need for a distinction among gender pronouns, male, female, and neuter, as found in English, he, she, and it. For this reason, the original all-purpose character for people and things, ta, was differentiated into two new ones, one for people and one for things. Since the snake, ye, was another form of snake, ta, people started writing the ye component, resulting in the character used today. In speech, however, it made no difference whatsoever since the original ta and its two derivatives, ta, were all pronounced the same. At around this same time, ta for people was considered inadequate 
because it made no distinction between male and female genders. So, a female version was created. It wasn't immediately adopted by society at large. Even in the 1970s, when I was at university, PA, for people, was still inclusive of both genders, despite having been invented 50 years earlier. Now, however, modern Mandarin reserves PA, for people, for masculine gender, he and him. I'll introduce she and her in our next lesson. Some examples of ta for he and him include its use with the particle de to show possession. Ta da sheng ri, his birthday. In other words, he with de means his. Simple possessive adjective. An example with he, ta yi ding so shi, he will definitely be on time. With a negative may referring to a past action, we can create the sentence he didn't finish reading it. The pronoun it would be understood from the context. And an example with today's first character, ye, and negative bu, we have the meaning of also not or neither. Tai tai bu chu, ta ye bu chu. His wife isn't going, and neither is he. The fourth character in today's lesson is another version of the snake pictogram, this time with a hand radical on the left. Pronounced first tone, tuo, tuo. It means to drag along, to procrastinate, or, in keeping with our snake analogy, Stopping and extending, pulling, stopping and pulling further. This too is a phonosemantic character with ta or its pronunciation variant tuo serving as the phonetic element. This character tuo can refer to both physical and figurative dragging. So we have our first example. Procrastinating, dragging something out, putting it off too long. To drag somebody underwater, can be either physical or metaphorical, the figurative usage referring to a person already in trouble, incriminating someone else, taking them down too. The fifth character in today's lesson is a stream that has expanded beyond its banks to form a pond, pronounced second tone, chi, chi. This is also a phonosemantic compound with the pictogram ye serving as the phonetic element. If we analyze the other variations of snake, ta and tu, both begin with a T sound. Chi is phonetically related because a CH sound contains a T at the start. Listen, chi. Without that T at the front, you would simply hear an SH sound. So, the element chi is a possible phonetic variant of ta and tu if we consider only the consonants. This character refers to an actual pond or swimming pool, or possibly an open area in tight, crowded surroundings, such as a dance floor in a club or a restaurant, or an orchestra pit for musicians in a theater. As I've mentioned many times, Chinese has far too many homonyms, so the way to say a pond would be to add the character for water and say shui chi. Our next character is an ideogram depicting the ground stretching out before us, pronounced fourth tone, di, di.
This is also a phonosemantic compound with a phonetic y, now pronounced with a d sound. Again, look at the consonants. A t and a d are identical sounds except for voicing, moving the vocal cords. It may sound confusing, but the phonetic changes are perfectly natural in human speech. A single character on its own is hard to comprehend in speech, so there are plenty of double and triple character expressions, including this ideogram. In lesson 10, when explaining the character to sit, zuo, we learned that the earth, tu, that appears between two people having a discussion, actually represents the earth or village god. The two individuals are presenting their case before the earth god. In an agricultural society such as China, the earth god holds an especially important position. So, the expression for territory, land, or the earth god is Tu Di. A place name would be translated as Di Ming in Chinese. Shan Di would be called a mountainous region or area in English. Di Xia Shui is literally underground water. And Mu Di Di would be our destination, literally the target area of our travels. As a quick review, remember that we learned this unstressed character, the, in lesson 3 used to show possession and relationships. It is used before a noun. Over the last several decades, Chinese grammarians have decreed that the unstressed character de in today's lesson is to be used with adverbally expressions, so it appears before Chinese verbs. English examples would be to work productively, eat hurriedly, plan meticulously, become gradually colder, etc. One example that we can make with the vocabulary learned so far is "直直的看," with eyes staring straight ahead. "直直的看." And now, since this lesson revolves around the pictogram for a snake, here is the actual modern character for a snake or a serpent, pronounced second tone, "she." In this character, you can see the radical for crawling creatures, such as snakes, worms, and insects. This radical is obviously also based on our original snake pictogram. As our first character, ye, and its variants, ta and to, became incorporated into other characters to express the meaning of stopping or continuation, a character representing an actual snake was needed, so the crawling creature radical was added to the original pictogram. Shi is also a phonosemantic composition. As I explained earlier, the sh and ch sounds are similar, as shown here using the IPA phonetic symbols. This next slide shows the three variants of our snake pictogram with the vowels disappearing to show only the consonants that are phonetically related. In human language, vowel sounds can change very easily over time because they are merely the vibration of our vocal cords. Consonant sounds, on the other hand, tend to be very stable and fixed because they are visible movements of the lips, tongue, teeth, and throat. So, in today's seven characters, 
the consonants T, D, CH, and SH have changed very little over the centuries. And finally, here is a summary of how all these characters are related to snake-like movement. Here is our color chart with today's seven characters and their correct stroke order. Yeah. Ta for people. Chi. Di. Ta for things. Shu. And tuo. The following chart shows these same eight characters in printed form. To fix the characters in your memory, copy them onto colored sheets of paper as suggested in previous videos, blue, green, pink, yellow, and white. Underline any homonyms and circle those characters with more than one pronunciation. So, what have we learned in today's lesson? 1. All the characters in today's lesson are related to the idea of stopping and then extending further, similar to how a snake moves. 2. The character ye in classical Chinese is basically a full stop which can be interpreted in several ways. In modern Chinese, ye means an extension or addition to what comes before, translated in English as also, to, besides, etc. The negative expressions ye bu and ye mei both mean English neither or nor. 3. Another version of the snake is pronounced ta and was used to expand the conversation to an additional person or thing. This character later split into two different ones, one for humans and one reserved for things, both pronounced first tone, ta. Four, in the early 20th century, cultural and political upheaval in China led to various language reforms, including replacing the classical language with the vernacular and adding gender pronouns all of which are still pronounced first tone, ta. The written forms changed, but the spoken forms did not. 5. At one time, ambiguous, the ta with a person radical on the left is now generally reserved for males. 6. The snake phonetic with a hand radical on the left is pronounced tu, and means to drag along or to procrastinate. The figurative expression tuo ren xia shui refers to a person already in some kind of trouble incriminating someone else, taking him or her down too. 7. A stream that appears to have stopped but then spreads out to form a pool is the character chi, which, beyond a simple pond of water, can also refer to an area cleared out for dancing or an orchestra. 8. The radical for land or the earth god, combined with the phonetic chi, is pronounced di and refers to land or territory. I explained how the pronunciations are actually closely related. 9. The second unstressed pronunciation of di is de, 
a particle Chinese grammarians have designated as the character to use with adverbial expressions, such as zhi zhi de kan, with eyes staring straight ahead. 10. I have included the modern character for a snake and serpent to show that it does indeed contain the ye element plus the radical for a crawling creature. A snake in modern Mandarin is shi. 11. The vowel sounds in a language change quite easily and often determine a person's accent. Consonant sounds, however, are usually consistent over time because they are the actual physical position of our lips, tongue, teeth, and throat. 12. Finally, I summarize how all these characters relate to snake-like movements in the hopes that students may find the combinations easier to remember. Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple character, and longer expressions. Answer using only the characters learned so far. Thank you for watching and listening.